Hey guys, welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs show. Happy Sunday evening. I hope we're all okay. I hope we're all right. I hope the weekend has treated you as well as it possibly could have done. Obviously, if you got outside and got some of that sun, good on you. In this video, though, we're actually referring back to a video that I did six days ago, and I'm already going to have to make amendments to it. You'll see what I mean in a second. And the, the video was centered around three positions that Spurs need to work on. Okay, so I'll go through it in a bit of detail. I'm not going to go through everything that I said because I don't want to, and you don't want me to either. But we're going to talk about potentially now where I look at the squad, and with these three incomings that are soon to be coming in, where I think actually Spurs now need to look at. So plenty to talk about, plenty to get into. Just want to say that if you're new and watching this, subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. At one of the first positions I actually talked about was left back. Now, I haven't changed my tune on this one. Um, I think watching uh, us against Vassell... I'll give Ben Davies the benefit of doubt. Obviously, it's his first preseason game. Uh, it's in a pretty pretty intense uh, in terms of situation where you look at the weather and how hot it was. You know, when we would then refer that, really, how the conditions would be in England, it's a lot easier. Yes, maybe the competition wouldn't be as, as easier to play against as it would, you know, a Leicester first game of the season, but the conditions would be a lot easier. So I thought Ben struggled a little bit. Now, but I have always said, I think Ben, I don't know, truly suits the left-back role that we want him to do. So that being said, I said, you know, we were looking at Bradley Locker. We we talked about Patrick Dorgu. I still haven't changed my tune. I still haven't changed my tune. And, you know, some people wanted Dorgu. Some people wanted Locker. I had no issues. Either one of those would have been grand. So I had no issues if you have one of those higher than the other. You know what I mean? So the second position that I definitely talked about was the right wing position. And this is something that I want to talk about. Because there's a certain 16-year-old that looks the part. Mikey Moore. And, I, you know, I said, look, with this right wing position, you know, if a situation where Kulisevsky gets moved more centrally, which, you know, he played up front against Vassel Kobe. He's played in the midfield against um, QPR and Hearts. Well, do you know what? There's a situation here where he's versatile. And actually, his value is only going to go up because he is versatile. Now, I'm not blown away by him centrally, but so far it's been decent this preseason. And I'm you know, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, no, he's rubbish centrally when, you know, this preseason he's probably one, one of the better players in the preseason. But with Mikey, back to the, the important thing here, if Kulu is moving centrally or is going to be featured a little bit more centrally, then obviously you have Brennan Johnson on the right wing and Mikey Moore. You know, you might feature Sonny or Timo if, if push comes to shove out there. But Brian Hill obviously going off to Girona. Solomon looks like they're going to keep him towards the left wing. I think Mikey Moore has opened up a position here. Now, he may be number two as they, you know, in, in American football or things like that, depth chart. He'd be number two in the depth chart. But then I still think we still need to add a winger. It's just my thought and feeling, you know. The, but the idea is we may not add a winger if they're truly counting Son as a strike, as just left winger, which obviously we saw it against Vassell. Didn't see it as much in the other games. If they consider Sonny a striker, then you have to add a winger. If they're considering Sonny a winger, they may go striker. It's just my thought and feeling on that. Obviously, because he, he's he's the key cog in all the attack. You know, if Sonny's firing and playing well, we do the exact same thing, don't we? You know? <clears throat> and then I mentioned, you know, the striker position of right winger. You know, I think we'll be one of those. It won't be both. You know, I gave a sort of shout end to the midfield. And actually, I think Archie Gray, Archie Gray's been really solid, but we haven't really seen him in the midfield. So ideally, I hope to see him a little bit more in the midfield, potentially in the next game. But Bergval, let's be frank about this. Bergval has looked fantastic. I don't think anyone expected him to look as good as he has. You know, it's pre-season. You want to, you know, take your time to get into it. But, you know, what we saw against Hearts, some people were like, oh, he looks a bit nervous. And he was one of the best players on the pitch, so that says a lot. Um, against QPR, for the time that he was before he was substituted with a, a tight hamstring, looked really at home with the first-teamers. Against the Championship side, by the way, you know, that's, that's you know, coming from Sweden to play against the Championship side and looking like you have been at the Spurs for years as it is a real testament to how good he is. But then you factor in against uh, against Vassil Kobe. 
looked really good. Looked really, really good. So is there a situation where Spurs go, well, we're moving off of Hoiberg. We've already done that. So Lacelso may go. Now, we're going to we're gonna bring one in if Lacelso definitely goes. I, I have no doubt about that. But Bergval is potentially the Hoiberg replacement. You know, maybe Basuma and Bentacore are the sixes. Pape Matasso and Bergval are the eights. And maybe you bring in a ten or you bring in an eight. And Bergval or whoever may be the backup to Madison. You factor in, you know, a Tyrese Hall. And Alfie Devine, shout out to Alfie Devine because, you know, people are saying, look, move Skip, just keep Devine for the season. Move Skip, sell him on, bring him in to, to be one of the academy trained players, which it's not the worst shout. And then one thing I want to talk about really quickly at the end, right back. And I didn't mention it in the last video, but I wanted to talk about right back. There's a situation here that Spurs are going to move off of Emerson to go to AC Milan. We, you know, we talked about it earlier in the video today. If you haven't seen it, go back and have a little watch. But Jed Spence obviously looked like he looks like a completely different player. And Spurs may not need to get a right back this season. Look, Spurs need to get a lot still. You know, this is still a really uncomplete squad. But if you still look at it and go, actually, we can get by with Spence for another season. We'll definitely get by. And if you know, if he doesn't improve, then we'll move on next summer. We'll replace him. But we will get by with a right back like that for this season. And, you know, Ange, Ange develops and be um, makes players better. There's a situation here where you could do that with uh, with Spence. So for me, I've kind of changed my tune. Left back, I'm still right on board with that. It's either striker or a winger, depending what happens, what they want to do is Sonny and Kulisevsky. They'll bring in a midfielder, in my opinion. But my last key thing is centre-back. We need to get another centre-back. Um... I like Ashley Phillips. I think Ashley Phillips is going to be a really good player, but is he ready now? Dorrington, I think, is a step behind Phillips. And I think Dorrington needs to go out on loan next season to the championship, get regular minutes in the championship. And I think Spurs will look to bring in a centre-back. Now, can that centre-back masquerade as a right-back or left-back? Maybe. And maybe they go and get a centre-back later in to the window. Maybe they go, that's not crucial right now. We'll get one later into the window. Obviously, um, Dragujin has linked up with the squad now. So he's out in Korea with the squad. They've obviously now moved into Korea. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But for me, if I had to sum up and change my tune, I'm going left back still. I'm going either winger or striker, and I'm going centre back. I think with Archie Gray and Bergval going to the midfield, potentially we don't need to look at that as much. I think we'll add to it, but I don't think we need to look at it as, as intensely. But we shall see. Anyway, guys, then a bit. I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section down below. Your thoughts and feelings about your three positions and have you changed your mind from only six days ago when we last talked about this? Who do you think we should be looking at? Play, positions, all that jazz. Obviously, subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. Better, guys, then a video. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.